welcome back. Today we're going to talk about when to actually stop adding these explainer variables, uh, the regressors. How many variables do we really need or features do we really need to explain what's going on to predict the outcome, right? And of course we're going to use my favorite data set, the MT cars data set, because it's very simple. And we'll start off with my data is equal to MT cars. run that and you can see we have our observations and our variables. We have 11 features across the horizontal, as you can see here. So we have miles per gallon cylinders, et cetera, et cetera. So let's create our first linear model. We'll call it model one, and that will be a simple one. So linear model with our data equal to my data. And we're going to explain, how do we explain miles per gallon explained by weight? And I just picked that one arbitrarily. You can pick whatever one you want. Doesn't matter. So we'll just run that right now and the model has been created. Let's take a quick look at the summary. So summary of that model one, see what we can get out of that. And we've got all this stuff in here. We talked about um, the P value, this here, and we talked about these little stars. And again, it doesn't make sense too much with one predictor, um, the weight, uh, because it's the only thing that's explaining the miles per gallon at this point. But if you had multiple um, predictors in there or regressors, then the star values might matter, the p-values might matter. But that's not what we're looking at today. We're going to look at this multiple r-squared here, this 0.7528, and the adjusted r-squared, 0.7446. Don't worry about memorizing them, but just know that it's kind of, kind of about 0.75 on both of them, right? In fact, we don't need to display all this other stuff, so let's go ahead and fix that by doing the dollar sign after this summary. So when the dollar sign is outside of the parentheses, it goes with the summary. So it's like, hey, what kind of attribute for this summary can we um, display here? And we're going to display our r dot squared value. I believe that's what it is. Yep. Yeah, so there it is. I did that. You can see at the bottom here it is 0.7528. And we can also do the summary model one and we can do the adjusted r squared. So adjusted to r squared. And there we have it, 0.744, it's slightly different. So the adjusted R squared adjusts for how many parameters or how many explainer variables you have. Because when you have multiple explainer variables, and I'll show you this in a second, it always gets a little better. And I'll tell you why that's kind of not mm, the best way to go. So let's do um, a copy and paste of these lines here. So control C, and we're gonna create something new. Control V here, and we'll call this model two. And over here where the weight is, let's add an explainer variable called displacement, okay? And so let's change uh, all these to model two as well. And let's take a quick look at what this is all about. So number seven, run that, run that, run that. All right, so you have 0.78 and 0.765 for the adjusted. So remember the previous one was 0.752 for the R squared and this one is 0.78 for the R squared. It went up, what do you know, right? In fact, uh, let's go ahead and copy this again and try another one. This time we will paste it and we're going to put it as model three. And we'll add displacement plus, um, I don't know, quarter second value, right? Run that, change these other ones to model three, don't forget, and run those as well. And you'll see that it's now up to 0.82 and 0.807. So it's always going up. And that's kind of the lesson I'm trying to tell you is the more you put in there, it's always going to go up. So let's do it. I'm, I'm doing it again. This time we'll add dis oh, I already added displacement. We'll add uh, cylinders, cylinders. I'll make this model four. I hope you can tell that I just copied and pasted it. So four and four, and let's try this again. 15, 16, and 17, 0.82, it went up a little, 0.84 for my R squared, and my R squared before that was 0.82. You can see that it's still jumping up and up and up. What else do we have left? We're running out of uh, features here. Oh, we have VS, we have Drat. Let's try, we have cylinders, carb. Ah, oh, let's try, let's try carb. So one more, and then I will move on to something else here. So we're gonna add carb, make this model five, and five and five. Boom, 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 0.844. 
So we had 0.843 here, then it went up to 0.844. It's hard to tell because I'm doing both the R squared and the adjusted R squared. So let's just copy one of these uh, R squareds and take a quick look at it all together down here. Control V, uh, let's put that in five times and we will change it to one, two, three, four, five. And we'll see them right after. One, two, three, four, five. So let's run this. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. All right, so we have 0.84. No, that's not where it started. So we have 0.815. Nope. Uh, what did I do wrong here? There we go. Okay, screwed up. Let's clear this by this little paintbrush here. Boom. Let's just run these so we don't get mixed up. And there we have it. 0 0.75, 0 0.78, 0 0.82, 0 0.843, 0 0.844. Okay, now here's where the lesson might be for you. We added these various features as we created these models. And as you can see, the jump from model four to model five was just very minute. It went from 0.8439 to 0.844, you know, that jump wasn't very big. So we're gonna add a lot of complexity to our model by saying, hey, let's add this carb here, right? But in reality, it's not really doing us any good because it didn't get us a much better model. Every time you add a feature to this model, your R squared will go up in value, right? So no matter what you do, it's going up. It's gonna fit the training data better, and that's the key here. If it fits the training data, that's fine and dandy. You can actually, with computers, you can fit the training data exactly. I can find an equation with this computer exactly that'll fit every single point on this chart if I wanted to, right? But we don't want to do that because we're going to overfit the data because we know that that's not reality. The next vehicle is going to have different um, statistics and it's not going to line up. There's no point in making it exact. We're not trying to figure out what we already know. We know the data here. Right? So if I find an exact equation that'll give me every single number every time of these values, fine and dandy, but I already have the data. I have a table of data here. I can give you the exact answer. I don't need a formula. I just need, hey, give me the weight, give me the, the miles per gallon, and I can tell you anything about it, right? So we don't need that. We just need something close. So our models get in too complex for very little gain. That's all I'm trying to say there. Let's go ahead and try this again one more time. But in this time, we're going to use the adjusted R squared. So paste that and I'll just type in ADJ for each one. I should have just, yeah, there we go. And let's just kind of compare these while we're at it. I'm gonna clear this with that little paintbrush and rerun these and let's see what we have. Uh, so what you see here now is that they're not always going up. So the adjusted R squared, it takes into account how significant each one of these features truly are. Now the math behind that is too complex for this tutorial right now, but just know that the adjusted R squared is usually a better indicator for whether or not this model is, you know, getting better or not. So let's take a look here. The first one was 0.744, then it went to 0.76, then it went to 0 0.8, 0 0.82, then it jumped back down to 0.81, right? So, you know, we, we can actually say that possibly without the carb, we're doing a better, a better job uh, fit in this data to this model, right? So we fit the data to the model. Um, we want to be able to predict what's next. That's the goal. So knowing that, think about this other situation that we're in now. We have weight, displacement, quarter second, cylinder, right? And we decided that if we add carb, we're over, we're overdoing it. Where our adjusted R squared is going down, our model is not really getting any better. Um, so let's just take this model four for example, and we have weight, displacement, Q-sec, and cylinder. But we didn't use some other uh, features that are in the in the data. We didn't use AM or gear or horsepower. We didn't use those. So how do we know if we've got the best model? Well, we can try every combination of all features with a varying amount of features inside of the model. We could try every combination of two, every combination of three, every combination of four, and so on and so on, and test all these out. Now that's pretty cumbersome. So in the future tutorials, we'll show you how to actually test this without doing a whole lot of this repeatability. That's it for this lesson. If you found these useful, again, please share and like, uh, post them all over the place for me. That'll help my channel out, help me grow and continue to do these and hope you guys come back for the next one. Thanks.